This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 930, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the day has finally arrived. Your Minnesota Twins take the field today. Was it a 3 o'clock start, I think? Yeah, I think it's a 3-10 first pitch. 3-10. Yeah, there you go. First pitch, Kansas City and the Twins. It's the first game of the year, so we'll see. Um, I, luckily, we're in a pretty bad division because not the greatest uh, – Oh, people already asked. For, that's amazing because I've had several people ask me about the light, happy music. Here it is. There it is. Yeah, 310, 310 first pitch. And I think, uh, like you were saying, Tom, it's a it's a weak division. It should be theirs to take and uh, make a spot in the playoffs. That's what I'm I'm thinking. I, I, I got to believe they're going to win the division. The division's terrible, but uh, I am not encouraged by that preseason that was horrendous so who knows we'll see we were just talking about before the show the commun- communication now is not what it used to be like we were using an example like i never hear from anybody uh, nobody ever calls me from uh, the show or whatever i talked to dan seaman once in a while that's about it but and i asked from friends they go oh yeah that's how it is now nobody ever communicates with one another and i said well I, you know, we talked about this like Okay, so I'm the shortstop, and there's a ground ball hit to me. Well, I stopped it. I have it in my glove. I did my part. Why do I have to throw it over to you? That's how the world is now. Why did it get like that? Why doesn't anybody want to do, like, teamwork? Is teamwork just out? I think it's a lot like the group projects back in the day in school. We're all traumatized from that, where you're like, I did all the work, and this person did nothing, and so – People will go, I know that I should probably go tell so-and-so because this person didn't do their job, but I'm just going to sit here and watch this play out and go, yeah. I told you so. But it doesn't help the people who didn't hurt you. It's the oh. other guy who hurt you, but you're hurting them, and that makes no sense. Yeah, it definitely brings down – it hurts the entire company or the entire group when you don't just pick up the slack of the other person. But nowadays it feels like people are like, ah, we'll make that sacrifice if it – maybe gets this other person out the door or makes them look bad because they didn't do their job. Yeah, I suppose that's what it is. I don't know whatever the deal is. One thing I will tell you on my walk today, I took a, like, I only got three and a half miles in because I was out and I had to do other stuff, but three and a half miles still about almost halfway to my goal. So it, it all worked out, but I ran into zero people today on the street who spoke English. Zero. Not one person spoke English. Uh, how are we doing with the uh, with the uh, the country? We're gonna have an it, uh, is English just going to go away? Is that the plan? No, I don't think so. No, well, I would say Florida. That's like I would say it's probably a lot like Southern California, where there are a yeah. lot of people that yep. speak Spanish, and so you're gonna f- come into that situation probably more often than not. Tevin, I got to ask you a question, and maybe AJ can mm-hmm. put the picture up. Did you see the the people that Joe Biden's taken on the road with him? Look, I got no dog in this fight. You, you love Biden, good for you. You love Trump, good for you. Good, I, whatever. It's got nothing to do with me. I don't know. I I don't even know if I, I'll probably vote, but I don't have any idea what the hell I'm going to do. But did you see the team they put together uh, to take on the road with them to to ask people to vote vote for me? I think it's Obama. It's uh, oh and. Uh, Bill Clinton, I saw. Yeah, was Bill Clinton, Obama, yeah. Bill Clinton, and and Biden. Mm-hmm. Did you see their their squad? They're bringing with them on the road. Uh, I have not, but I would assume that it's they picked one person of every nationality to nope. check all the boxes. Nope. Let me put it this way: If I were a black man in America today, I'd be going, "Why don't you use me a little more?" Seriously, how do they not know that looking at that squad, you're just using black people to get other black people to vote for you? They're being used. Yeah, and it's not really a strategy that I would say works. <laughs> no. Because you could put every black person you've ever met on stage and say <laughs> vote for Joe Biden or Donald Trump, and I'll be like, yeah, I think I'm good. I, it's what I'm saying. Exactly. I said, look, I, it's, I understand that, that black, black people have to have a – and it's not just black. It's Spanish people and stuff like that. It's, I think mm-hmm. there's one honky, but I'm not sure. But but I, I just and again you do what you do if that's what Biden and those guys want to do good for them I'm happy for you and all the rest of it, but it just seems to me that you're using people for your own benefit. Yeah, you would think that rather than just having a parade of you know minorities on stage, mm-hmm. do things in your day to day job that would make them want to vote for you. You shouldn't have to yeah. you know 
oh, AJ, I know that we've been screwing you over all year, but we got your cousin on stage, so maybe you should vote for us. No. Like, <laughs> do something good for the people, and then you'll get more votes. Do you think we'll ever get to the point where we'll all be even keeled? It's like, okay, we, we've, uh, you know... We cannot be responsible for something that happened 200 years ago, so we're doing the best we can right now. We're not using anybody for our own benefit, which they do all the time now. Can we all just be truly equal, or is that just never going to happen? No, there will always be something that people will divide. Because, I mean, even in, you know, if you get a group of white people together or a group of black people together, even if it's all the same demographic, you're going to, they'll find ways to differentiate themselves from one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you do what you do. If that's what they want to do, it's fine. But it's just so obvious to me, you're using people for their skin color. That bothers me. It comes, it comes down to like the lip service and ground service are two different, two different things. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me I'm on the team. Show me I'm on the team. Right. You know, do something Mm -hmm. that, that benefits me, that ropes me in, um, that I am like able to kind of see like, Hey, this impacts me in a positive way. And that's going to, like you're saying, Tom, drive you to okay now I, now i feel like that's the reason i should vote for you not because you say yeah. hey, yes we're we're all together we're on the same team right i'm not I'm not voting for either one of them because they showed me they got three black friends yes <laughs> well that's exactly what i'm talking about Tevin. it's like look who i'm hanging out with i mean you're not on this show because you're black you're on this show because i've known you for 15 years or whatever how long has it been i'll say about 15 years yeah, yeah. It's about 15 years so it's like uh, AJ, we gotta we gotta reach out and find a black person to be on so we can look. No, 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 no. You're either on the show or you're not. You it, deserve to be on the show or you're not going to be on the show, right? It's, right. It's like when Hillary Clinton, when she did the uh, what was it, the whatever freeze challenge on her plane. Uh, oh yeah. No, oh, yeah. there was like the trendy video where like everybody <laughs> takes a video of themselves like paused in the like, mannequin frozen challenge. mannequin challenge. Yeah. There we go. And, <laughs> So, well, that and then it was like within the next couple of days when that was, this is when Tom uh, Pokemon Go, which was like uh, like a phone game, was super popular. Right. Yes, yeah, right. Like, How about we Pokemon Go to the polls? And everybody's like, "Oh my God, oh, you, know, God. you just don't get it. You just don't get it. Stop forcing it." Yep. <laughs> okay, now I got to mention one more thing because I know we got to get moving here and all the rest of it. But they were talking about Groundhog's Day and all that stuff on the national news this morning. Mm-hmm. I posted about this, and I'm very serious. If you name the space Gobbler's Knob, that means you've never had sex in your life. Whoa. Doesn't it? Wait, where did this come this from? A, gobbler's this, Knob. Gobbler. They were talking about Gobbler's Knob. That's where the, the where the, what are they even? Little. The, like a gopher hole? That is it gophers? Like the hottest club yeah, in gophers. downtown Minneapolis. Gobbler's Knob. That's what I'm saying. I mean, right here. Where are you headed? Hennepin Avenue, also known as Gobbler's Knob. But why the hell would you name anything? Go- I suppose turkeys would stand on a hill or something, so it's Gobbler's Knob. Yeah, but that's what I would assume. It's got to be turkey-related. <laughs> you can look it up if you want. Uh, and one more thing, a sad note for me, because I never met him in person, but I talked to him many, many times. Joe Lieberman died, and he was one decent human being. Here's a guy. He was a Democrat. In some ways, he was a hardline Democrat. In other ways, he was very giving. Joe Lieberman was a very smart man. He was the first Jew to ever be uh, to try to run for vice president. He was just a very, very nice man, a very smart man. I wish we had more guys like Joe Lieberman. And, of course, he was pushed aside because he wouldn't suck up to either. He was a Democrat, but he didn't suck up to all the Democratic ideas. Or he wouldn't do that for the Republicans if you're a Republican either. We need more Joe Liebermans, and now we lost the one Joe Lieberman we had, which is very sad, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always sad to see, especially when it's like a political leader that you kind of watch their career and you're like, oh, they've done yeah. some great things and they pass away. And it's always tough to, to deal with. You know, it's so great because he was one of those guys. Every time I go, ladies and gentlemen, our special guest, Joe Lieberman, Thomas Barnard, how are you? It was never Tom. It was always Thomas. <laughs> but then Gore Vidal, you remember him, the great writer, Gore Vidal, uh-huh. phenomenal mm-hmm. writer. Every time he talked to me, he said, Mr. Barnard, how are you? Because I used to talk to him, I, not only on the show, but we'd call each other once in a while and just go over some ideas and all that stuff. Never met him in person. Same with Joe Lieberman. Never met him in person. But we had a, we had a phone relationship that was wonderful. So, Joe, if there's a heaven, I know you're there. And if there isn't, you're never going to know it anyway. So what the hell's the difference, right? Right. 
Yeah, I mean, it's true, isn't it? You'll, you know. Yeah. No, you got a point. It's all true. Oh, God, we got to get going. I'm sorry. But but I wanted to say, I, I loved Joe Lieberman. Just a wonderful man. And Gore Vidal, too, by the way. Both dead now. Maybe you shouldn't come anywhere near Uncle Tom because you end up dead. Is that what it is? Yeah, and don't turn 82. I already, yeah, I I already, got, 82. My yeah. I already got my will plan yeah. just for what <laughs> I got it all covered. All right, we'll take a break. Be right back with uh, Judd Zolgad in just a couple of seconds. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? You want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota, started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida, and now can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now, and your Minnesotan friend, Matt, can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida. And like Matt, is one of us as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends and contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That is OneKeyWest.com or call Matt. 612-791-2345. That's 612-791-2345. And work with local professionals that you can trust. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. Mike Lindell, my pillow employees, want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. They really do appreciate it. Uh, to thank you, they're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code TOM and you get free shipping on your entire order. Get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived. Won't last long. Six-pack towel sets for only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses, mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb. Dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Please use promo code TOM. Then you'll get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146 or go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 930, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to talk a little baseball here. There's no qu- Oh, you know, I got to do something. I just found, I don't know wh- what happened, how it happened, but somebody stole my twins hat. I had a brand new twins hat and it's gone. Whoa. What when the hell is that all about? When, when's the last time you saw it? Oh, it's been a long time because I was going to, I was saving it to put her on this morning, you know, but uh, yeah, it's, I don't know what, it's just gone. I don't know what happened to it. Do you so, suspect it comes from inside? the family or no no not inside the family but you know okay. how people come in here, hey i came in to clean the windows it's oh. like oh look at that twins hat oh that. man i don't know if that's what happened but i can't find it watch so an here's... investigation find out damn it those hats I'm are expensive to... but here's what i'm going to do instead all right I'm take care of this right now i don't have a twins hat so at least i can support the twin cities with my saint paul saints hat oh i like that and what's the name of their new <laughs> They have a new, like, pig. What's it called? Oh, Zempig. Oh, Zempig. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and they're getting heat for it. <laughs> what? There's Why? a Star Tribune story today that says they're getting heat for it. It's fat oh, shaming. It's hilarious. It's not fat shaming. It's helping people. Ozempic helps people. 
It doesn't I, hey, make I'm with them you. fat. It makes them thin. The Saints should. The, I, I haven't read the story, but the Saints quote to the Star Tribune said, "We told them to f off." Good. That, good. No, no, no. I'm saying that should be the quote. That's my quote. That's oh, my oh, quote. I, I, I said I haven't read the story, but the Saint, but the Saint Paul Saints people should say, "We told them to f off." Screw off. You can't make just, a big deal out of everything. It's Ozempig. Ozempic. It's a matter of fact. It's funny. By coincidence, mm-hmm. Catherine was talking to a friend of hers, a very close friend of the family, as a matter of fact, and she went on Ozempic, lost like 45 pounds, is the healthiest she's ever been. It's a good thing to name it Ozempig. It helps people. Yeah, and plus it's just great. It's just a exactly. great name. It, it's just hilarious. God, everybody is so incredibly touched. Well, let me give you an example. Everybody, how touchy people are. Yeah. So I was on the site this morning checking out, you know, some posts on on Facebook and all that stuff. And I, you can go to the Tom Tom Bernard Show page, and all that stuff appears there. But I have the Tom Bernard page too, the, the private one. And a guy posts because I said, "I'm telling you, I think the Twins are going to win the division. They're looking pretty strong. It's not that strong a division that they're going to win the division." And a guy posted, "God, really? I thought you gave up drinking." Right, which I thought was funny, <laughs> That's but apparently line. he thought as I was replying to it, I hadn't posted it yet. Yeah, he thought I'd be insulted, and he he took it off the off the uh, page. It's like you can put it back on there, Luke. I know it was you anyway, and, it's and I thought it was funny. Yeah, it's a good line. That's it a great a line. line. I've had I quit drinking thirteen years ago, man. We could talk about that too. It's good for me. Not you do what you do, I do what I do. I'm I- happy. What I don't, what I don't get about this whole culture thing now, though, is why do we? I mean, if you want to be offended by small stuff or you know the Ozem yeah. thing, that it's yep. your right. It's your right. Why does anyone have to care? God, just calm like at what point down. in time do we tell people, you know what, just buzz off? Like, it, go home, be offended. Yes. Uh, scream within your four walls. Nobody cares. The company doesn't care. Like, I'd love to see the Saints really c- come out. And yep. and as as I said, perhaps they did, but. The key to me is you got to push back. You know, you can't just be like, well, we're I sorry agree. if it offended. Screw off. I agree 100%. I think it helps the product because it does help. Some people can't take it. I understand. Right. You know what's amazing to me about that? Oh, it's just, it's not a good thing. About, uh, but everybody got the COVID shot, and how are we doing with that? I'm not saying, look, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't know if the COVID shot worked or not. I, uh, I took it, I think, three three times and a booster a couple of times. So I, I went along with the program. I got it a couple of times. Never uh, The second time I got it, it was a little worse, but it was never really horrible. Yeah. But it did not work for some people. Some people died from that disease because it didn't work. You know, you can't just, oh, it was epic. You can't talk. It helps people. Shut up. Well, but I think the thing too here is, um, is this perception of fat shaming. Oh, How dare no, you, Jesus. fat shit. Hey, you know what? Come back with me to the 70s in grade school. And yeah. you can oh. see, you, <laughs> you want to see issues with shaming? And I was the, and, and I was on receiving end too. So I'm not saying that I was the bully. I was oh, on the receiving end of being yep. mocked. And you know what? Toughens you up. I agree. I can see there, there there's a difference. What I don't get is, is this, not to rant, but. I don't understand the difference that people don't see between really mean spirited, like yes. mean, yep, you know, like bullying and things like that. I, I okay, I'm I'm cool with that BS, but you know, fat shaming. Yeah, I know. You it's know, ridiculous. I mean, it's one thing if you call the person, if you attack a person for being overweight, it's another to get offended by Ozem pig. Exactly. It's a pig. It's not that it, it's a human that eats like a pig. It actually is a pig. Yes. Jesus. I, calm down. Everybody's got to shut up and calm. They really got to calm down. There's no question about but it. But I love the name. It's a great name. It's I love hilarious. the name. Congratulations, Zemke. Saints. I would have not thought of that in a thousand years. I think they did a great job. I love that stadium. I love going to their games. Oh. They're always fun. Great restaurants right around uh, the area. I mean, it's just yep. a great experience. Shut up. No, right. you're right. That because that part of of St. Paul was really sketchy for a long time. Oh right? yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was Mo basically doesn't. abandoned and not great. And now they've done a great job. And you're right about like the restaurants. Phenomenal, Some great restaurants around there, and that ballpark. I mean, my God, yeah. that is that is a jewel of a small 
park, but I mean, you you go back and look at Midway Stadium, right? Yes, sir. And God bless it. It was fun to go to, but I mean, it was a dump. And this place is gorgeous. Yes. Did you ever play a game at uh, Midway Stadium? I never played a game, but I mean, I saw a bunch of games there. Yeah. We used to play softball there a lot back in the day. Oh, okay. And it was fun, man. I mean, yeah, it was not the best stadium I've ever seen. It was in a great location, right by the State Fair, kind of. Kind of. Yep. A little south, I guess, but. Good parking lot, too. Yeah, great parking lot, no question about it. So, I mean, that's you can have fun. I mean, look at it. We stayed in the Dome for how many years? That place was a dump. Tell we spent it. 52 whole million while everyone else is spending 500 million. That that stadium was a dump, and we won oh, two God. World Series in it. And people now will swear by it because they grew up there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Met Stadium, I loved it. Oh. But, but, but I will acknowledge it was also pretty much a dump i it, it mm-hmm. was you know At it was end, basically it was. an erector yeah. set yeah and if i'm not mistaken they um they condemned those bleachers by third base i believe that is true i believe by the end they wouldn't let fans sit there because they were condemned so but i love this whole <laughs> thing well the dome i missed the dome and the dome was great i'm like actually the dome was never great and and because i was 11 when they moved and had become a huge baseball fan yeah you know, I will always, I will go to my grave. One of my top five complaints at the pearly gates will, will be this. From the age of 12 to 40, Tom, I was forced to watch indoor baseball. In other oh, words, yeah. my yep. in other words, my prime drinking years. Think about this for a second, okay? Yep. My 20s, my prime drinking years, which should have been spent in bleachers, just absolutely sauced at an outdoor ballpark, were spent indoors. Why are you looking at me? Because I may have done that before they built the dome. Well, I'm jealous of you, first of all. <laughs> you got what I wanted, which oh, it was, was... It was phenomenal. Yeah. And I'll tell you another thing. Steve Hatley, who did middays at 1500 KSTP when I was working there, when beginning my career, he had a pair of uh, Viking tickets on the third deck behind home plate. What a great place to watch a football game. I mean, oh, you look right yeah. down on the field, and you saw everything happening. Sammy White, you could see his patterns from that high. You could see this guy's going to be wide open. I know exactly what he's doing, and he got wide open. You could see it from up there. It was wonderful. That's the funny thing about the Met for football, because mm-hmm. it was it was built for baseball. It yep. wasn't a great baseball stadium, but it was an absolutely awful, for the most part, football stadium, aside from like yes. what you're talking about. I had a buddy whose dad had tickets, I think, through his corporation. I believe it was Honeywell at the time. 50-yard line, second deck. So second deck, 50-yard line. And he would take me occasionally, and I was there for the Browns game that Rashad caught the mm-hmm. pass in. But, yep. what's, but what's funny is the worst seats for football in that entire stadium were the first deck because you were so far yes. away from the field. Yes. Yep. And, and if you were on the opposite field from the, from the sidelines, and both teams – if you recall, we're on the same sideline. You were behind like all the TV cameras. You couldn't see a damn thing. So you're right. The higher you got, the yep. better it was. No question, but I got to have one more. I was just thinking back because I get these memories of 1500 KSTP. I was 18 years old. I think I was 17 actually when I first started there. Mm-hmm. But I walk in, they got Knapp and Bush in the morning, Chuck Knapp. Uh, became the program director a little later on, but they had Steve Hatley, they'd have Steve Shannon, they had Smoke and Joe Hager. You know, other than Chuck Knapp and a couple other guys, those guys are all dead. And the sad story about Steve Hatley, he was a wonderful man. God, he was a great guy. He went down to work at WHBQ in Memphis, and he's there. This is before he got to KSTP. And uh, he's walking in one day, and here comes Elvis Presley on his motorcycle. I think I've told you this story before, but it's such a great story. Yeah, sure. Here comes uh, Elvis Presley on his motorcycle, and Hatley's walking out. Elvis is getting off his motorcycle, and Steve goes, Elvis, that's a beautiful motorcycle. Oh, you like it? He goes, yeah, man, it's great. He gives him the keys. It's yours. You can have it. <laughs> now, here's the worst part. Isn't that a great story? <laughs> that's a fun. That, that, now, let that's me tell an you, awesome story. Let me tell you why it wasn't a great story. Oh, okay. Six months later, Steve Hatley got killed in a motorcycle accident. You're kidding. What the hell kind of world is this? You think about it. Elvis Presley gave me a motorcycle, and then I get killed in a motorcycle accident. Oh, 
Isn't that a, an, an amazing story? Yeah, like when, like what, what time, like set was, was this the seventies? Yeah, it was seventies. Yeah, early seventies. Early oh seventies. Well, yeah, he was at HBQ in Memphis, like in '69, I think, something like that. Oh my goodness! But just That's interesting. Honest to God, I don't know. It's just one of those things that, on one hand, Elvis Presley gave me a motorcycle. On the other hand, I'm dead. <laughs> so, I mean, which, it's... which is why I personally am terrified of motorcycles. I'm there, right there with you. Because of that, I think it's like I'm. Nope, I have no interest. I just don't see a good survival rate if you crash. It's true. So cars, it's... cars. I got, I got stuff around me. You know? <laughs> exactly. I got That's metal. Exactly right. <laughs> they don't have seat belts on motorcycles, do they? That's how long it's been since I've been on a motorcycle. No. no. And and if they did. It wouldn't really help you. Probably you'd be just, a bad you'd, idea. Probably you'd be just worse. Be, yeah, you'd be tied. You'd be tied. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, they they scare me, man. They scare me. No question about it. So uh, three ten today, Kansas City and the Twins. Yep. Twins should win at least two of the three games over the next four days, wouldn't you think? Yes. Yes. Uh, in fact, I think yeah. that's uh, now. Now they opened with the same series a year ago and they swept. But I think what you just said is spot on. I think they should have won two yeah. or three. Two out of three would be good. Probably win the first one, got the day off, lose the second one, and win the third one, and let's move on. I like Look at it. you. You got it all mapped out. I am the biggest Twins fan ever born, even though somebody stole my hat and I can't wear it, and even though I have to stare at AJ with his Cubs hat on. Well, I'm and in... Cubs and, and age back up because you got the – it looks like he's got, got – look at that. Got the jersey, look, baby. Look at this. The, uh, the Little League World Classic from 19. I was, I was gifted – to it uh, a couple couple of years ago as like a Christmas present. And nice. It's a nice little. Ask, it's a weird. It's a rare jersey. I like. Got to ask you the question though. Go ahead. Did you listen to the Cubs game with Harry? I was too young to get like the full Harry Carey. Oh, experience. that's true. Yeah, Harry's that's been fun. dead since '98. Tom has he really? He died '98. So I would have had oh a year. Oh my god! Like, yeah, you would have had one year. What was going on? What were you born age? Nine, 90? 97. ninety-seven. Ninety. Oh my God! You're like my, my niece's age. God. I don't like to think of my my coworkers being so young. I'm going to prefer to ignore I'm, that. AJ, I'm sorry you missed. I do 87 if that makes you feel better. As you listen to the games, we're going to have a great game today here at Wrigley Field. It's going to be by the time you get to the seventh inning. Then all sometimes I wish there was a guy on the. Uh, and he'd listen, lose track of what the hell he was saying. Oh, he God, so yeah. hammered. <laughs> and then, like, Steve Stone would whisper yes, yes. to try and help him. And, like, you could hear Stoney would mute his mic, but Harry's mic wasn't muted. So, like, you could hear Stoney whispering things. And and then guys would come up. And by, by this time, if Harry was bored, he would spell their name. He would write their name backwards <laughs> as he was broadcasting and then pronounce it. Yep. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, Cubs backward is scub. Yep. I think Red because it was spug, spuck is what it would be. He said spug, whatever he said, but it would be spuck. He took a shot at, I think, Mark Grudzelonic's last name yes. backwards. Grudzelonic. Yep. yep. Yes. That's a hard one forwards. Yeah. A lot. The guy downstairs. When you Next time you see Gelfand, oh. ask him what Harry said to him the last time he talked to him on the show. Because he was, hey, Harry, I got something. And he took a shot at Harry. Mm-hmm. Long pause. Long pause. Barnard, control your monkeys. monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> He's the, all right. He was the greatest, man. Oh, he was the greatest of all. But that's baseball. See, that yeah. is one of the reasons I love that game so much, because of the great people we had. I mean, it was just the stadium announcer back at the Twin Stadium back in the day, one of the great guys. Did you ever get to know him? Bob Just Casey? Bob Casey. I came across him a couple of times. Not not well, oh. but I mean, he was a character. I would be in the sub, in the Skyway system in downtown Minneapolis. And from two blocks away, I'd hear, Barnard! I, went, I could, like, see him yeah. in the U-shape deal, but yeah. he was, like, a block and a half away from me, and I could still hear him. And the Metrodome, the Metrodome made him famous because one, like, Puckett came up, and the great Puckett call, you know, Kirby, yep. Puckett. But, like, the no smoking thing, which I think they played at Target Field for, like, the first three years. Yeah, they did, yeah. Like, yep. at the Met, he was upstairs, I think, in the press box, and he was 
he was popular, but I mean the Metrodome, he absolutely took off. He was plus wonderful. that voice would boom throughout the do- you know, because of the roof on it. That thing would hit off the roof at his voice, and and then he'd sit right behind home plate in in that um, in that deal that that they set up for him with like uh, yes. some type of glass, non breakable glass panel. And guys would foul the ball straight back. And he'd <laughs> jump. You'd see Casey jumping, and it would all be on TV because you could see the shot. It is baseball season. It starts today. I'm very excited. I absolutely look. I like other sports, but baseball is the king of sports for me. I just love baseball. And we will talk to you again. Well, I won't talk to you next week. I'm not going to be around, but I'll talk to you in uh, about ten days or eleven days or something. Awesome. Don't let the twins drive you crazy. Barnard, control your twins. <laughs> All right, Pally. Thank See you, guys. sir. We shall take a break. Be right back. Chris Egger. Be, well, I'm not going to talk news with him. We're still talk Twins baseball. That's all I'm saying. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market, the economy, And he knows how to plan for your retirement. You don't put it off another day. Not a good idea. Do not put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You have got nothing to lose. And you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future like I do. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard, your boy here, is a paid endorser. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard to find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. Let's take a second to talk about my bank, North American Banking Company. You've heard me talking about them for a long time now. When they opened in 1998, they made a promise to deliver a better banking experience for their customers where you know your banker. And they know you. While a lot has changed since 1998, this commitment to being a true community bank in the Twin Cities has not. So if you're looking for a better banking experience, why not bank with my bankers at North American Banking Company? Go to nabankco.com or stop by any one of their six Twin Cities locations. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Channel 5's Chris Eggert brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation at 952-925-5608. No news today. We're talking baseball, buster. That's fine. I could listen to Harry Carey stories all morning. You know, there were so many great ones. It was unbelievable. Uh, He was. But honest to God, when you listen to Cubs games or the White Sox before that, you could tell what inning it was by Harry's uh, enunciation. Yeah. And or lack thereof. Or lack thereof. The game started like, hey, we're here again. We're having a great, it's unbelievable. It's going to be a wonderful game. Seventh inning. You know, the guy downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Harry, are you boozed up? Is that what this is all about? Uh, yeah, one could think. I, uh, for me, it's Herb Carneal, man. Oh, I uh, loved just- him. His voice, and yep. it just reminds me of summer, and it reminds me of baseball, and it reminds me of the our World Series teams, oh, and God, it's yes. just what a great time. Ba- baseball is, I, and I, I suppose maybe the reason for that is the baseball is played in the summer, whereas uh, you know football starts in the summer but ends in the dead of winter. Basketball is always played in the dead of winter, and those were the major sports. I, I didn't know much about hockey. I mean, I do now since I got to know. 
several players, really decent people. Hockey players in general are very nice people, but yeah, baseball is that summer game, man. You start to talk about it in February, even though it's freezing and it's snowing like a bitch back when I was a kid. You knew that just uh, a short six weeks away, weather's not going to be much better, be a little better, but at least the Twins would be playing, man. It was wonderful. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a nostalgia thing. I, I mean, I honestly, I couldn't name five players on this year's Twins roster, but um, you know what? If Maybe if they're relevant again this year. Yeah. I mean, they, they really, uh, it was nice to have them, you know, do something at the end of the season last year and kind of yes. get – Get yep. the fan base energized again. and I'm not going to argue one point you just made because I agree with you 100%. It's just baseball is such a great sport anyway. I mean, the Twins and the Vikings came in the same year, correct? We already had, you know, the Minneapolis Lakers here until they moved uh, to Los Angeles. Became the. I still don't understand the L.A. Lakers. Yeah, there aren't weird, any lakes in L.A. Yeah, I know. It's, it's so weird. It's like, what? The Lakers? Is there a lake in? Or I'm sure there, there are lakes there, but it's not. I don't know about lakes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't either. But but yeah, the Twins come along in the summer and start playing in Minnesota. I think the Twins and Vikings both started in what sixty sixty one, didn't they? I think. Uh, I yeah, don't. Vikings for sure started in sixty one. Yeah, so it must have been both. Twins I think it was both. Sixty one, yeah. Sixty one, sixty one. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. We lose our basketball team, which won about ninety five NBA championships. And then, of course, by the time I'm old enough to know, they were gone. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Bob. Shea. Well, you know what? Maybe your Minnesota Timberwolves. Maybe maybe Carl Anthony Towns will get that uh, that that knee situation fixed. I, I, I mean, Tevin, yeah, uh, from having some athletic experience, I think it's like going to be impossible for her to, for him to come back and 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 play after four weeks, but. Yeah. Well, especially then in like a playoff situation where everything yeah. like he's losing out on his cardio. And so it's going to be tough, but I mean, even if we can get him out there at 80%, I think that'll help out a lot. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. We got to get her going. There's no question about it. you going to the twins game uh, when they get back to town. Uh, I think we're going to do the show out there actually that morning. Are you really? That's yeah. Wonderful. So, well, we're, we're trying to, it's in the, it's, it's in its infancy right now, but we're trying to get out right. there and do the show. Which will mean I'll be here doing my news appearance from from uh, Target Field. So, all right, big shot. Well, I know you got to get on the news right now, but you know, you know, ladies and gentlemen, here's Chris Egret with the news. What do you think? <laughs> I'll do an open for you. That'll be. It'll be I, I've done enough openings for you over the years, anyway. That's was true. I voice over at Channel Five for about four different times, something like yeah, that. Yeah, my uh, my preference is your voice, but you know what? I don't know. Whatever. I don't get a. I don't get a say in a lot of things, Tom. I don't know if you know this. Really? Is that true? I didn't realize you don't get any say. Yeah, they they don't uh, they don't pull the news anchors <laughs> aside and ask them their opinions on a lot of things. So, God, you know, I'm doing that uh, female anchor thing on the on the family show. We've had yeah. all the great, but I cannot find Cindy Bracado. Cindy's an old friend of mine. You know, it's, um, I mean, tell me she moved to L.A. or something. I, that's a good question. I, I don't know if I'm Facebook friends with her or not. Cause she, they, she was, she was done anchoring here. But when yeah, I first started yeah. here, she was doing that like um, Sunday morning, like twin cities business journal program yeah, or something. Yep. And she was super nice to me. Like went out of her way to be nice, which I, yeah, you know, that, that to me said a lot. She didn't know me from Adam and um, yeah, let me snoop around a little bit. Maybe I can see. Yeah. I got to track her down. Kathy Wurzer, I, I'm still, she won't commit yet because I think, you know, can you imagine working at PBS and being attached to Tom Bernard? Boy, there's a combo for you. Well, I think she's on the air right now. You know, she's on I the air in the care. afternoon too, but. I don't care at all. Quit. <laughs> all right, we'll talk to you. We'll okay, talk you to you tomorrow, sir. Have a good rest of your day. Channel 5's Chris Eggert brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation at 952-925-5608. We shall take a break. Be right back. Very special guest, Tony Curran, up next right after this. Don't miss out on the 66th annual GSTA Rod and Custom Spectacular Car Show. It's happening on April 6th and 7th at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds Coliseum, presented by Brainerd International Raceway. Enjoy the area's finest hot rods, custom street machines, and motorcycles, That'll be on display around the Coliseum. You'll be able to see cars from the original Ford drag team up close. Any kids that attend... 
can get a free Hot Wheels car, baby, while supplies last. You can find discount tickets and more information available online at gstarod-custom.com. Don't forget about the free parking, too. Go to gstarod-custom.com. March means it's springtime, and that means spring cleaning and your carpets and air ducts are the first item on my list. Your carpet and ducts are your biggest air filters in your home, and you could be breathing in nasty dust, dander, and bacteria. Zero Res's platinum-rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water to the rescue with these limited-time offers. Three rooms of carpet clean starting at just $129 off $40 savings, $75 off air duct cleaning, and 20% off all upholstery cleaning. Zero Res has a over 17,000 reviews with an average 4.9 star rating. So their gotta love it guarantee ensures your spring cleaning will leave your home looking and smelling how it should. Call 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z or visit ZeroResMinnesota.com to schedule your spring cleaning offer today and be sure to ask for the Tom Bernard special. Zero Res. Spell it forward or backward. It spells the same. Schedule your appointment today and beat the spring cleaning rush. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. (coughs) Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota. Started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida. And now he can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now, and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com or call Matt at 612-791-2345, 612-791-2345 and work with local professionals you can trust. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Curran, ready to go? He sure is. Tony yeah. Curran, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. How you doing, Tony? I'm good. How you doing, Tom? Marvelous. I got a great story for you about Scotland, man. You want me to do it first or at the end of the interview? I don't know. Why don't you hit, hit, hit me right now? I'll hit you right now, Tony. Here we go. By the way, Tony Curran, starring opposite of Julianne Moore and Mary and George, premiering on stars on April 5th. We'll get back to that in a second. Very quickly. I got to tell you though, because I used to take once a year, Nick cook and his lovely wife and Catherine and my lovely wife. And I, the four of us would go to Scotland and play golf, whether it was at Turnberry, we all over Scotland, we went everywhere. But the one thing I loved about it, Tony is the fact that in certain parts of Scotland, they, the people could not say the name Nick cook. So everywhere we went and played golf, He'd hit a real, cause he was a really good golfer. He was a terrific golfer and wow. his caddy would look at the other caddy, my caddy and go, it was a great shot by knock kook. He called him knock kook. I, I, man, I will carry that with me forever. Tony. I loved it. <laughs> oh, mate, Tom, listen, I brought my six over. I'm shooting the prequel to Outlander right now. I had a, a nice little oh. round of Beswick a few weeks ago. So, um, uh, uh, hail, rain, snow, whatever it is, uh, that's good. Yeah, some of the Scottish pronunciations of names, 
can be um, can be uh, inexplicable, really. <laughs> I, Tony, one more thing about going because I love Scotland. I mean, I, first of all, I love Europe anyway, but I love Scotland. It's my one of my favorite places to to go. But I'm a pretty big guy. I was a weightlifter back in the day, so I every bar I go to in Scotland, and it was in a very friendly way. Tony, these guys would come up and go, "Hey, you want to wrestle?" <laughs> Everybody wanted to wrestle me. It was wonderful. <laughs> That's great. You know, that's a term of endearment over there. Tom. It is. You know, and sometimes they might even they might even keep their clothes on. Yeah. Well, certainly, Tom. I don't know if you, if you see Mary and George. There's, there's there's quite a lot of semi-clad men and women resting around. So if, if you like a bit of physical contact, you you may like Mary and George. It's funny that you uh, mentioned. I had the great pleasure many years ago to work with Robin Williams, God bless sure. him. And mm-hmm. um, it was such a, it was a Bill for Scythe film called Being Human. And it was just, uh, uh, he's such an inspiration to me. And it's, it's very sad what happened to him. Anyway, as I'm sure you've seen on YouTube, the um, his take on golf is the most hilarious um, uh, video you'll ever see. I'm not, not sure if you, have you ever seen that? When he he talks about uh, he talks about golf and you know it's a stroke. They, they call it a stroke because you you're, you're hitting with a tire iron so bloody much you're going to fall over and have a bloody heart attack. Anyway, um, it's uh, I love the game. I am um, I was uh, yeah I, I've been to Bay Hill many years ago. I met I met the King. I met Arnold Palmer and I, sure. I was I was just an Andy. Recently, when God bless me, Zach Johnson won, um, and uh, no, it's um, I, I love it. It's uh, a good walk spoiled, as someone once said. But um, I don't know. I, I I love it, you know. But I'm I'm so happy you like Scotland. That's great. Oh, That's I great. love Scotland. I don't just like it, Tony. I love Scotland. I love the people. They're very, very friendly. They do want to wrestle. They do. And if you don't have a drink with them, it's like, what the hell is wrong with you? That, you know, I just love yeah, them. Something's wrong with you, you know. It's an <laughs> insult to my culture. It yeah, is. I actually, I don't drink. I've stopped drinking. Ah, oh, you're drinking with me tonight. Let's have a wrestle. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's... Uh... <laughs> oh, God, Tony, it's great. Nick Cook, Nick Cook had a good time. Oh, bless. That's funny. Mm, yeah, knock kook. Great shot, knock kook. I loved it. <laughs> Tony Curran with us, ladies and gentlemen, the historical timepiece, Marion George. Oh, my God. Tony Curran gets to play King James the First. Pardon me, Tony. You're a king now. Yes, and uh, His Majesty Tom, if you wouldn't mind addressing me by that, that would be, <laughs> yes, that, would be I will. that would be that would be more suitable. No, I don't. I don't think uh, King James has quite gone to my head. You know, a little known fact, which I I was posting yesterday on social media, but yesterday was the 27th of March, and uh, the 27th of March was the anniversary. 399 years ago to the day Ooh. when um, King James VI of Scotland, first of England, actually died. Yeah, he um, he was born in Edinburgh in 1566, oh. and uh, he passed away the 27th of March, um, 1625, uh, 57, 58 years old. So yeah, yeah, he was on the he was on the British throne. In, well, he was a He'd been on the Scottish throne after Mary Queen of Scots was, you know, Queen Elizabeth executed his mother, and uh, then when he when he was uh, in his thirties, in the twenty two year reign, uh, sixteen o three to sixteen twenty five, the Jacobean reign um, of uh, of the British throne. So um, yeah, it's quite a you know Jamestown, Virginia, the King James, the first British settlement was named after him, the King James Bible. Um, yeah, it was quite an incredible um, uh, uh, short period in history, which a lot of... It's interesting, Julianne Norbletha was on Jimmy Kimmel last week, and she was like, you know, I didn't really know much about it, you know, that, that, that short period of time, the Jacobean time. And when I arrived in the UK, I realized they didn't know much about it either. Right. right. <laughs> so because it's such a little-known time, whether because... Uh, we've talked about it. Um, he was Scottish. There was anti-Scottish sentiment. He also wasn't a warring king, Tom. He, he called himself Rex Pacificus, which means in Latin, great king of peace. He broke a peace with France and Spain, which Queen Elizabeth did not do. There was lots of wars happening at that time. And also, he was Scottish. He was queer, and he was an anti-war king. So um, 
historically that you know those those three elements um from an english perspective maybe were like kind of uh you know somewhat brushed under the rug and well let's keep this quiet you know obviously there was the gunpowder plot in 1605 which um uh they tried to assassinate king james uh, guy fox and if you've seen yeah. the film uh, v for Ven- v for vendetta they they sort of touch on that movie where they all wear the masks and it's basically about um you know, trying to assassinate King James. Yeah, so it's quite a, it's quite a compelling uh, period of history that we haven't heard much about, and uh, the extraordinary ascension and rise through the, the Brit- British Royal Society of um, uh, Royal Court of, of Mary Villiers as well, which Julianne plays, and, and her son King uh, George Villiers, which is um, also equally as compelling. Yeah, sounds like a magnificent story. One thing I do have to insist, though. Uh, the next time I, I talk to you either, you know, uh, on on the show or I run into you, we like, see each other on the street or wherever, I do have to insist because I'm looking at the uh, the one sheet here that talks about you, and I'm looking down, and there's my buddy, Tony Kern, wearing a crown. Pardon me, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And there was a few. Um, I actually had to sword fence in one of the scenes with my crown on. Just, uh, yeah, the, the third episode and that costume all beautiful costume was these incredible costumes that were made by these incredible seamstresses hundreds of costumes um bespoke outfits um she says annie simmons are incredible costume um designer uh, or head of costume she was like tony can you just be careful not to drop the crown and I'm, like, I'm, jump- I'm, I'm one i'm inebriated i'm no. a little and He's a bit of a maniacal king, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm sword fencing with these um, vi- vi- violin and viola bows, and um, I think there was moments when my crown did fall off my head, you know? Mm. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it's quite the outfit. If you've seen some of the costumes, um, there's, uh, it's incredible. Some of the outfits are, uh, yeah, the, it's a beautiful period in time for the, for the fashion, Tom, you know? No, oh, there's no question. Well, and you cut quite a fine figure in the crown uh, and the in the king outfit too. You you cut a, you cut a good figure, oh, Tony. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I I work out with an old friend of mine, Tony Horton. He used to do this thing. I used to train uh, called P90X. Uh, oh yeah, sure. A movie yep. years ago. Yep. Uh, but Antonio Banderas and Omar Sharif called the Thirteenth Warrior. It was a John McTiernan film. Me and Tony met them. But just before I started shooting Mary and George, I'm not saying Tom. I was a uh, I look like Magic Mike or anything. But, um, you know, for a man of my years, I, I try to keep fit. But uh, I stopped working out. <clears throat> and basically, you know, not not to get a little tubby, but I didn't want to look cut as a sort of, you know, 16th century king or queen. So, and during one of the scenes, which was, um, you know, with five other men, a um, bit of an orgy scene, I'm blindfolded and I walk into the scene. And I, just before we do the take, I, I pull up my blindfold and we go, we're rolling. And everybody drops the road. And there's all these naked men. And I look at them, albeit they're a little younger than me. I look at them and they all look freaking amazing. They're like cut and beautiful and handsome. But, and I'm like, and I'm like this tubby fat ginger king, you know? And I'm like, okay, okay. Thanks, Tony. guys. But it's, it's, definitely, it's an eye opener when uh, five other men drop their uh, robes and you start shooting. It's like, okay, we're, we're in it to win it now, kids. Here we go. Tony, uh, yeah, look, uh, I'll, I'll send you an airline ticket. You got to fly into town someday and do like a week of shows with us. There's no question. No. Are you in Minneapolis, Tom? Is that where you are? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yep. In Minneapolis, St. Paul. No yeah, question. No, I'd love to. Maybe, maybe we'll play some golf one day, you know. That would be uh, on the bucket list, my man. I'd love to uh, love to do that, yeah. Okay, very quickly, I know you got to go, but i um, playing golf in Scotland one time, and I'm playing pretty well, but I've had a couple of it's back when I used to drink. I've had a few, well, more than a few, actually, Tony, and I hit a shot, and I didn't get all the way through it, so I kind of shanked it a little bit, and I said, man, that's going to be hard to find. And he goes, no, no, don't worry about it. I know right where it is. It's in the caravan park. <laughs> Like, okay. <laughs> Apparently hit it in the trailer oh, house. <laughs> right? A trailer park. I'm the sure trailer park. Daddy was used to that. That's funny. I yeah. can tell you a quick one. I was playing, if you don't mind, I was playing with Sean Connery years ago. Sean oh, Connery's last sure. film. If, if, I do, if I do use some vernacular here, you can, you can, you can bleep it out. Is that okay? 
Whatever so, you need to do, Tony. We, we, we play nine holes. A place called Karlstein, just outside Prague. We play nine holes. It's raining. We go in. I'm on the phone to a friend of mine in Inverness. And then Connery looks over at me. He called me boy. Hey, boy. Yeah. Oh, who are you talking to? And I say, oh, Sean, I'm, I'm talking to my friend Alistair in Inverness. And he goes, oh, yeah? Well, you can tell Alistair you're a better fucking actor than you are a golfer. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I don't think that changed. I, um, I'm quite happy being a better actor than a golfer. You know, 12 handicap, you know, goes up, down. But, uh, yeah, it was a great time working with that. Big Tom, as we call him in Scotland, old Connery. So, uh, no yeah. question about it. And, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, if you ever get a chance to go to, uh, to go, well, you're not going to be able to see this anymore because he's not around. But the uh, first time I ever played at Turnberry, I'm walking up that long staircase up to the building. And uh, as I'm walking up, you know, the helicopter pad just to the left there as you're walking in the front door? A uh-huh. hel- helicopter lands on the pad, and getting out of the helicopter would be uh, Sean Connery and about three other very, very famous actors. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm in the right place. They just go, hey, you doing? Just walked in. It was unbelievable. I mean, so many famous people fly around Scotland in, in helicopters and play golf. It's magnificent. Yeah, no, I'd like, I'd, I'd like to, I, I, I wanna, I, I'd like to do that, Tom. Hook me up. Okay, you and I will go on a helicopter tour. We'll get, uh, well, we can't get Jack Nicholson, yeah. who was with Sean Connery that day, but we can't get him anymore. We can't get Sean anymore. Oh, so, Tony, yeah. you and I have to do it. That sounds good. Well, Sean Connery and the Golden Bear, that's quite a, that's, that, that would we, I'd, that'd make him a good foursome. If you, who, would you, who would your perfect foursome be, Tom? Maybe we should, uh, we should share that one one day. Oh, one day. we'll talk. You know what? Now you're going to have to call in because we've got to talk about that. Yeah, we'll just we'll set up the yeah. Tony Curran segment every week. It'll be phenomenal. Yeah, exactly. We can talk about golf and and, and helicopters and and um, and I, I've you know I've got a few other fun stories in my uh, in my back catalog, Tom. You know, Tony, you're always welcome. Anytime you want to come on, I'm here for you, pal. All right. Oh man, it sounds great, man. It sounds great. I um, I love that you love Scotland, Tom, and it's been great chatting to you, my friend. Oh well, thank you, Tony. I hope we talk soon, sir. I hope so, too, man. Bye. What a great guy. Yeah, all the best, Tom. Good all luck. the best to you, Tony. God bless. See, now that is what you're av- – and I'm not kidding you. I'm not – because I've been to Scotland many, many times back when I was younger, going to play golf. And That's how people are in Scotland. Let's have a drink. I'll tell you some stories. We'll tell some jokes. I'll take my pants off. You know, it's just – it's a, if you've never done it, you have to do it before you die because Tony Kern is a perfect example of how Scots treat you. They're funny. They're interesting. They have great stories. Mm-hmm. Again, uh, Tony Kern starring opposite Julianne Moore and Mary and George premiering on stars April 5th. The historical timepiece follows Count, uh, Countess of Buckingham, which would be Julianne Moore, who molded her son to seduce King James, played by Tony, and become his all-powerful lover. Ah! What do you think of that? Yeah, that must be the scene he was talking about with the five guys <laughs> yeah. just dropping trousers. <laughs> what in the middle of the bathhouse? There, there, there was a lot going on yeah. in that interview. <laughs> uh, I didn't tell Tony this part, but I got to... Uh, and I won't use the word like he did. I mean, you don't have to edit that out there. I mean, if you have to edit it out, it's not... No, it's the, it's no. a podcast. We're but it is a mean. podcast. I take the kids. We're at Turnberry. The kid, there's about uh, Gervan, Scotland is about 20 minute drive. I took the kids, maybe not even that, probably 10 minutes. I take them down to there. So there's a children's park, you know, with like merry go rounds and all that stuff in it. Mm-hmm. And as I'm walking in, I got my son, my daughter, Andy's like nine, Alex is seven. As I'm walking up, there's a Scotsman who's about five foot two. He's smoking a cigarette and he's got his hands like, he's like, Got his arm like that, and he's smoking his cigarette, and he's staring at me and staring at me and staring at me. Because obviously I'm the prick who's bringing my kids to the park, which forces his kids to, to, you know, bring him to the park. So he's at the park because of assholes like me. That's what he's got on his face, right? Mm -hmm. So as I'm walking by, I figured I'd embrace him because, you know, he's, he's just scowling at me, smoking his cigarette, scowling at me. And I go... How you doing today, sir? And he goes, none of your second business. <laughs> oh, well, pardon me. I will, I'll move forward from here. What do you say? 
We do have to take a break. We'll be right back. Matt and Kristen from Sotheby's will join us right after this. When you go to a restaurant, you expect a chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice tom bernard is a paid endorser hi guys it's chris Eggert from channel 5 morning news along with my friends megan newquist and ken barlow in the morning we pride ourselves on sharing people's stories i've been lucky enough to be part of this five eyewitness news morning team for more than a decade now this is where i've raised my kids and working alongside my friends for all these years we're like a family too we are family chris working with you and ken and hannah it is such an honor to help folks start their day every morning on Channel 5. We get to catch people up on the news that's happening, and Hannah is here to keep an eye on the traffic around town. And when it comes to weather, I know people rely on me to plan their day and get their family out the door. Over the last 10 years, there are so many memories and so many laughs. I just love sharing the forecast alongside you guys. I feel the same way, Ken. To all you who start your day with us here on Channel 5, we think of you as family, too. Thanks for turning on 5 Eyewitness News in the mornings. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm looking at the screen. I see Tevin and I see AJ. I see Matt's wearing a nice yellow shirt. And then I see some big shot real estate person. It's in some <laughs> national magazine or something. Yeah, I, I've seen her before someplace. <laughs> big yeah. shot. Oh, yeah. Real big shot. Just doing my job. <laughs> oh, it's, be, it's, it's nice to be recognized for all your hard work, for sure. But I was, I was actually in Minnesota, and my LinkedIn kept beeping. And I did an interview four or five months ago. And all of a sudden, I'm like, what is going on on my LinkedIn? I never use it. I'm not looking for a job. And all of a sudden, I, <laughs> I go on LinkedIn, and there's my face on the front cover of a magazine. I was like, what? What is that? Where Where Look did that, that come from? And then, uh, yeah, Mortgage Maven. Isn't that funny? <laughs> there it is, Mortgage Maven. Mortgage women, ladies and gentlemen. There's big. She got a big smile on her face. I'm looking at the cover right now. Yeah. Women Does must fight like these... Uh, what is this all about? Women must fight these fallacies. So women, you're still battling uh, battling guys in the uh, in the mortgage business, huh? Oh, you know, it can be a male-dominated industry. It just sure. kind of depends what area, where you're at. When I go to some of the big um, mortgage conventions, it, you know, it can be a guy's world. And I'm not one of those women, I'm a woman, hear me roar type thing. So mm -hmm. I just... I literally just go to work and do my job and but I've been doing it for 27 years and so it's it's nice to be recognized for sure and you know I'm yes. in a unique area so everyone loves my story because I owned my own mortgage company in Minnesota for 13 years and then um, I moved down to the Florida Keys not knowing one person and had to start all over again at the age of 47 and um, 
everyone's like, you know, I closed almost a hundred million dollars. So oh. everyone's wondering, how did you do that in a transient? It, you know, if you're good at your job and you have a lot of connections, you can easily do that in Minneapolis, Los Angeles, California, Chicago, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm on a little island with 25,000 people with transient people coming in and out every single day. And, you know, I just, I knew I had to be a part of our local community and that's what I did. And, um, you know, just all my connections through Minnesota, uh, you know, owning my own mortgage company, going to Sartell High School, going to St. Cloud State, having connections in Minnesota and, you know, thousands of clients back there. The reason why I did your show with Matt was just so we have that connection so we right. can help the Minnesota people yep. buying homes in Florida because there's a lot to navigate through insurances and that what area, everyone always asks me, what area should we go to? And that's why Matt and I did this show. It wasn't to, um, you know, me, apparently I made a mortgage company upset in Minnesota. So I know that's got some attention because <laughs> that mortgage yeah, there you company go. is advertising now down in the Florida Keys. So I heard you loud and clear. Got it. But, you know, <laughs> If you're not a part of the community down here, they're not going to use you. They yeah. they want yep. to be referred yep. and used by locals. But that's why. So I want to thank you, you you guys. It's been so much fun and being a part of the show. And I mean, being a nice. part of your advertising and you guys, it really helped. So I thank you for everything. And I'll let Big Yellow down there in the corner Big- say something too. <laughs> Big Yellow. How you doing, Big Yellow? I'm doing well, thanks. Enjoying my time up here in Minnesota. It was time to cool down. I came up here a couple nights ago, heading back to Florida tomorrow. And Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah. I go back and forth three times a month, I would say. You know, I'm there more in the wintertime when it's nicer to be there. I'm more here in the summertime when it's nicer to be here. At, uh, it works out perfectly, honestly. No, I could see that. Do you do you come back to Minnesota for a, a few weeks? I know some people come back, uh, particularly for July, August, September, and October. People love to come back for those four months. I go back and forth constantly year round. Oh, do you really? Um, I get bored easily. I like to I like to sit in airplanes, I guess, or something like that. And so yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying it's it's kind of interesting, you know, trying to keep these two businesses going. I wasn't really sure how it was going to go, and it's constantly like fine tuning it because of geographically being in two different places. Mm-hmm. Um, it's completely different. The markets are completely different. Uh, Kristen and I have different situations. You know, me being a realtor, there's like 600 realtors in Key West or something like that for 600 really? transactions. I mean, Man. it's just like it's hard to unless you're like a a third or fourth generation conk as they call them down there like from there and have deep roots you have to you have to find a niche way to get into that market yeah um which is kind of why you know like i think i met Kristen. like i don't even know when we met or something but i I knew her at a bar more than likely no it was was probably late at night even i don't even know but it was it was a long time ago um but you know trying to take this avenue of helping Minnesotans get down there or help them right. up here. You know, I, the market down there ends kind of starts to slow down this time of year when we're ramping up up here, you know? Yeah, so true. To me, it's, to me, it's kind of a year round, uh, keep me busy. So I got it. And was it sloppy Joe's? Was that the bar? I don't think no, so. I, I think never it go was, there. It was, you don't uh, go there. I do. No. <laughs> I don't <laughs> there. No, I do. Does. It's a very, very yeah. famous bar. There's a, is that one one of the reasons you you kind of shy away from it a bit, Matt? Because everybody who comes to Key West has to go to Sloppy Joe's and see where the big man sat, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know many locals besides Kristen that go there pretty re- <laughs> pretty regularly, but Matt, they have a <laughs> man, and you meet people. They do. I tell them this all the time: bring your cards and go to Sloppy Joe's because that's where all the tourists are. And if they're going to buy a house, start yep. ripping out your cards, Matt. Well, all right, all right. <laughs> he doesn't listen to me all the time. No, he just won't I really listen should. to you, Kristen. He just won't <laughs> listen. I don't know why, but, you know. So, Matt, yeah. I heard you're hanging out with Andy today for a while. Is that is that correct? My son Andy and you are going to get together? Yep, that's correct. I think uh, noon today over in Edina. Oh, there you go. That'll be fun. Andy, you'll look forward to that. And So, I, I'm glad, Matt, you brought this up, that, that winter's huge in Key West. Summers are huge in Minnesota. Uh, and it does make sense. Obviously, people probably don't want to go out in 85 feet of snow to buy a house and, you know, that kind of thing. But so it is kind of nice that you guys can come and go if you wish that it's great. 
to me, it's perfect. It's, I think I've said this on the show before and I tell everybody this, but to me, it's like the best of both worlds. You know, I've lived here in downtown Minneapolis, which is where I'm at right now for like 20 years. And it feels like mm-hmm. home to me. Key West feels like home to me too. Um, I think I've kind of got it dialed in the way I'd like it to stay. You know, we were just talking to Tony Kern from Scotland. He's a great actor. He's got a new movie coming Hilarious. out. Hilarious. <laughs> He's a wonderful guy. And I, I tell you what, I love Scotland, but I love Key West. It, it just, you know, some of you go, ah, Key West. and I, he, he. If you're saying that, you've never been there. It's one of the most beautiful places you'll ever be, by the way. Um, it just, it's fun. There's so much to do. The food is great. The entertainment's great. I think people do not understand who've never been to Key West. You you don't know what you're missing. It's a great place. Well, so many people, and when they come down, they say, oh, how, this is your life? This is what you do every night? <laughs> no, I'm not at Sloppy Joe's every night. You know, it's like I, I have the best of both worlds. I have the quiet, relaxed world up at, you know, my house. I go on the ocean. I We go mm-hmm. to sandbars. We go fishing you know, for a sunset cruise. And if I want to go have fun, you know, I'm, I'm 15 minutes away from Key West. I go have my fun. I come home, you yep. know, there's always so much going on. There's so many, and I'm such a people person. So I love meeting people. We constantly have people. I have six of my friends coming down next week. So Ooh. they, yeah, you know, it's like, I, I do have a rule now. I do not go out to eat anymore. I'll just meet you for drinks after, and that's it. Because, yeah. you know, someone gained a few pounds from eating and drinking too much down here. So, mm, that but uh, it is beautiful. It's absolutely, but the thing that I love the most, it's so relaxed. Everyone's friendly. It's nice. It's the Caribbean in the, yeah in the United States. It really, really is. The temperatures are great. Yeah, we might have a, hur- a hurricane here and there, but, you know, we we recover, <laughs> so I'm not scared. Now, Matt, you're in uh, Minneapolis tonight, but you're going back, what would you say, Sunday or tomorrow? Tom- when, tomorrow? Uh, uh, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow oh, morning. You are going back tomorrow. Yep. So, like, do you, what, what plans do you have? And I, you don't have to give the full reveal exactly where you're going to be, but do you have special spots when you go back home that you go to? Um, actually, when I come up here, I tend to like hide out in my condo. Oh, <laughs> do you really? Of, most of the time, because in Key West, you spend so much time out doing stuff. I, I can get a lot more done here, to be honest with you. Well, I suppose so. that is probably true. Yeah. Um, have you guys kind of set a precedent, you think? Because it makes sense to me to do what you guys do, uh, to be a real estate agent and stay in one place that used to be how, how it, it was, and maybe it, the larger part of it still is. But a lot of real estate people I know do move around. They you know, whether they go to New York City or they go to Chicago or they go to Key West like you guys do. That's pretty common now, isn't it? I think it is. Um, it's so much easier to do it now than yeah. it used to be with technology. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of spread out like with the entire Twin Cities and then the Keys and stuff like that. But I partner with people that are the experts in each of these communities. Like if there's some opportunity that I'm coming into and I don't feel like I completely know it perfectly, you know, especially up here in Minnesota, we have such a wide range of agents here covering different parts of the metro that I yeah. that I tap into regularly. You know, I got downtown covered really well. I've got the West Metro. Metro, all that covered really well because I work out of our YZ office, our Edina office, now our right. North Louvre office. Um, uh, you know, anything's anything's possible. It's it's more exciting to me. You know, you can help people up here for down there and back and forth, and it's a, it's been a good way for me to expand my network. Honestly, I know you guys got to go, but I got to close with this one. It's so great because Kristen and Matt and I have been talking for about four months about getting together for dinner, but somebody's <laughs> always out of town, always <laughs> what whatever. <laughs> We've been trying to get together for like four months now, and it hasn't happened yet. I know. It's always Matt. It's not me. He likes the airplanes. It's oh, it's me. Matt's fault. <laughs> yeah, it's all Matt's fault. Yeah, no, we'll get it done. Like but there's a place, Abandanza, down in down in Key West. It's an Italian restaurant that I just love. The people are great, great food, all the rest of it. I got to get down there because I have not been to Key West in a couple of years now, and I got to get back down there. So, Matt, when you yeah. get back down, maybe, maybe. I'll hang out until June so we can hook up together. <laughs> make it happen. We'll make yeah. it happen. Well, thank yeah, you we'll, both so much. We'll take you guys out on the boat or whatever you want to do. Go out to Oh, my gosh. I just sounded like a Minnesotan boat. Did boat. you hear that accent? Boat. We're going to boat. <laughs> yeah, we're <Sure. still> there. <laughs> okay, Kristen, how do people reach out to you personally? Um, 
you can go to flkeysgirl.com. That'll take you into my loan application website, or simply just call me at 305-587-4403. That's Coast to Coast Mortgage. I'm down in the Florida Keys. I do lend all over Florida, and I still have my license in Minnesota for repeat and referrals, and that's how you find me. Magnificent. And Matt, going back and forth, but how do people find you? Um, easiest way is onekeywest.com. Or my phone number is really easy to remember, uh, 612-791-2345 from back in the days when you could pick out your own phone number. But pretty <laughs> one, onekeywest.com is uh, kind of my landing page. Yeah, no question about it. So, Matt, uh, any ideas where you'll be going to dinner tonight, your last night in town? Um, probably something from Costco. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got oh, good food. They got good food. I got no problem with that. We well, thank are you so both. opposite. It's amazing uh, how we love each other so much. Probably why you work together so well. Yeah, probably. right? <laughs> probably what it is. We'll talk to you both soon. Thank you very much, Chris. Thanks, Kristen, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye. We shall take a break. Be right back. Kristen Bird will join us right after this. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota. Started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida. And now he can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota, or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com, or call Matt at 612 791 Two three four five six one two seven nine one two three four five, and work with local professionals you can trust. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Valley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. The new Tom Bernard Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com, keyword partner. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Actually, it's the Kristen Burt Podcast now. That's all I'm saying. I've taken over the show. She's taking it over, ladies and gentlemen. Kristen Bird Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, Kristen. Look at AJ's little costume. It's so cute. Oh, it's got a costume. It's a costume. I'm just wearing stuff for a team I like. We talking about it. It's a costume. It's so I agree. cute. It's oh. like wearing something for Taylor Swift. Like, that's what it feels like. Yeah, sure. Why not? I love it. <laughs> You look, I I like you in the little hat. It's so cute. Very. Oh, so my St. Paul hat's not cute. His hat's cute, but mine isn't. What I had is other work. St. Paul Saints. Okay. Is yeah, that an that's, actual, that's not an actual team, is it? Yes. I mean, uh, like a major league baseball team? Well, that's no, what, double A? Double A? Triple A for the twins, so right below. It's triple A, okay. Okay. 
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to just dump Kristen on because she blasted my hat and, and she made fun of, uh, of AJ, so we just can't talk to her. I actually think it's cute. Saying. I look, he's oh, all like checked cute. out. I wish you wanted to you. pinch his cheeks. Oh, you <laughs> it's so cute. I had other work to go to today. I'm going to go home and take everything off and just curl up into a ball in bed. <laughs> no, it's like your Taylor Swift moment. It's your era's tour. I love it. I'm in my Oakland Day era. era. I love it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So, Kristen, what's the latest in your biz? Oh, my goodness. There's been a lot going on this week. Um, yeah. I, I think um, following the Sean Diddy Combs story has been kind God. of one of the major stories. And kind of interesting, yesterday TMZ reported that he had sold off for Volt TV, where he had been a CEO. He stepped down from being a CEO last November, but sold off his shares. And I'm like, he knew that the feds were after him. He was tipped off. Because, oh, you know, really? He, yeah. The, he's starting to make business moves where he's starting to liquidate. Um, so oh. I have a feeling that he knew more things were coming down the pike. So I have a question. Which is bigger, the L.A. airport or his house? Jesus, <laughs> that house is big. We don't have a very big airport, honestly. It's just no, like seven true, sections. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. say his house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say his house is bigger than the airport. Yeah, it's a sizable, uh, sizable unit. Let me put it that way. And the one in Miami is no smaller. So no, and, and remember, he's got one in the Hamptons. He's got a New yeah. York City apartment. Uh, and they trashed his house. Like when the feds go through your house, they do not care about refolding your clothes no. or putting away the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they showed a video of that on uh, one of the networks. I don't know. I don't know what it, where it was. Where I saw it. They pretty much trashed his house. They did. Yeah. And I think what's very interesting, we're starting to see people who have either worked for him, been associated with him somehow, speak out saying, I know Tamika Ray, who had worked as one of his dancers, said, I knew not to get close to him. I knew not. To, I worked for him, oh. didn't get near him because she's like, I knew he was trouble. So I, 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 like I said, I'm like, I am dying to hear what Jennifer Lopez has to say about him because she knows she knows the stories, but we're never going to hear them from her. God, how much dough is he worth? Uh, before all of this, probably a lot more than he's going to be worth after yes, all of this. Yes, that's what I understand. But, I mean, he wasn't like, it looks like he's, he's a billionaire. I mean, all he, the stuff he's got. Yeah, listed as a billion a billion dollars as of 2022. Is that well, a celebrity go. net worth? Uh, it's just according to fortune.com. Okay. So this, is from, this is from two days ago from pinkvilla.com. Uh, his reported net, net worth. As per celebrity net worth is eight hundred million. Well, okay. you know, two hundred million dollars swing one of the one way or the other. So what's the difference? Yeah. Eight hundred million. I'll take that. That's work. That, that works for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing the two hundred million is like, uh oh, you're paying off all the lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's but true. I think this is going to be a pretty big legal case, and I don't think he is. He's not the only one. I think that this is a bigger, yeah. this yeah. is a bigger picture type of situation, and. You know, we never got the complete view of what Jeffrey Epstein's web of lies looked like. You know, maybe. Right. If if Diddy is convicted, maybe we can get a better grasp on this because sex trafficking is a huge problem. So I'm glad you brought that up because looking at what's going, going on with P. Diddy, the government dropped the ball on Jeffrey Epstein. He got away with murder, for God's sake. Yeah. I mean, just horrible things he was doing to people. And he got away with it because it seemed like nobody cared, including the Prince of England. Yeah, Prince Andrew. You know, it's interesting. Um, Netflix has a movie coming up called Scoop. It's coming up, I want to say, next week, April 5th. So mark it on your calendars if you're interested in, like, the drama of Jeffrey Epstein and the royals. And this is just going to be another headache for King Charles, to be honest. But it's going to focus in on Prince Andrew's BBC interview that he did where he tried to defend. There's a, a particular picture mm -hmm. of him with his arm around a 17-year-old girl, oh. um, the one who... Um, brought the civil suit against him for sexual abuse. And he settled that, although he never claimed any type of guilt. Um, so that particular movie will be based around that. And after he did that interview, he had to step down from Royal Life because it was such a huge disaster. Um, I'm trying to think who was in it. Um, Gillian Anderson from X-Files. She's in it. So it's going to be really good. The actors in it are good. Yeah. 
there you have it, man. It's just, God, the world feels weird right now. All this stuff's going on. The energy is off. There's a lot yeah. of like weird, yeah. dark stuff, even going yeah. to what happened with the Kate Middleton thing. I mean, it is tragic that she has cancer yeah. and, you know, everyone's wishing her well, but the way even it was handled and got out they, the palace let the the rumors spin out of control um that energy even just felt weird people were like saying she's dead <laughs> she's not dead she's alive and fighting God. cancer but everything just feels a little bit off right now it does and uh, you know that's a good way to put it just everything do you think it's because everybody's got such an attitude well the the political climate is changing america right now hopefully mm -hmm. it'll get back to where it was but my God, the hatred is way over the top. I just feel like there's a lot of darkness. And I think the other yeah, yep. a story that's been in the news a lot, and we talked about it here about Quiet on the Set. I know a lot of your listeners watched it and gave me some feedback. You know, they, they sent me DMs. Um, they are doing a follow-up episode. There will be another episode dropping April 7th because more people want to come forward and discuss their experiences. Um, so this could be an ongoing series. Like as things develop, they will drop another episode, kind of like what they did with the Hugh Hefner case when they looked mm -hmm. at the dark side of the Playboy Mansion. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of these things, like we knew these were going on. It's been rumored. There's been whispers. And, you know, whether it's Diddy, whether it's Jeffrey Epstein, whether it's Nickelodeon. And, you know, darkness always finds the light eventually. And hopefully we can bring a lot more lightness to these situations. I don't think I can watch that movie about the Nickelodeon thing. I, I know it's it's very quite present right now, but I don't think I could watch that. The docu series is tough, and I, you know, to yeah. me, it would be a trigger warning for anyone who might have experienced any type of sexual abuse, child abuse, even verbal. They talk a lot about verbal abuse with Dan Schneider. It, it's not an easy watch, and it's not one where you're like, let me just binge watch this. Honestly, right, right. you got to watch an episode, take a breath, walk away, come back to the next episode. Seems like it. So any cheery news coming out of L.A.? <laughs> here's, the, here's the story that I was like, we have followed this one for a long time, too. Kevin Costner is reportedly trying to make his way back to Yellowstone again. Oh, like, God. What? And I just just to update everyone, like he wanted a ton of money. He wanted more saying the script. And Taylor Sheridan's like, it is my show. This was your comeback. Mm -hmm. Either yep. come back for the back half of season five. Um, or that's it. And the reason with Kevin Costner not coming back for the back half of season five, they couldn't do a season six. So it ended the series. So his yeah. castmates are yeah. a little bit pissed at him. Um, but now all of a sudden he's like, I want to end John Dutton's story the right way. And Taylor Sheridan reportedly is saying, um, I already wrote all of the episodes without you. Yeah. But he's really trying to make a comeback, which I think is so strange. Didn't he just go through a really rough divorce or something during this? He did. Christine yeah. Baumgartner was his right. wife. Um, she allegedly might have perhaps been having an affair with uh, one of his friends. And what, uh, one of his friends? One of his friends and neighbors. Yeah. Like if there was a couple. Person? We don't. He's not oh, famous, but okay. uh, it was a couple. You know, that couple you go out to dinner with a lot? Mm. Mm. It seems like Christine <laughs> might have been enjoying some time with the husband of that neighbor. Um, Eek. Yeah, and it, it, she tried to challenge the prenup. Um, I interviewed Kevin Costner's very famous lawyer. You've probably heard the name before, Laura Wasser. I interviewed mm. her a couple months ago. And while obviously she cannot talk about the case, um, and this was, this was kind of played out in the press. She did say, she goes, I don't recommend anyone play out a divorce case in the press. She's like, we never do it for my office, but it's usually the publicists that fight it out. And she's always like, we really try to stick to the prenup agreement because, yeah. uh, and yeah. she's like, it, you know, oftentimes it doesn't work in your favor and it didn't work in Christine Baumgartner's favor. She asked for something like 250 grand in child's um, support. He was like, hey, I can give you like 70. And the judge, and she fought that. And she's like, let's let the judge rule on this. And the judge gave her like 46. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So, you know, maybe don't gamble with things like that. Yeah. So it basically costs her like 25 grand a, a year. Or is it a one-time settlement? 
Um, that is monthly child support. Monthly. Oh, of course. What am I? Th- I monthly. said yearly. I meant monthly. Yeah, You're absolutely monthly. Right. And they have like, three what? kids. They have three kids, and I'm sure it will go down because I, one of their kids is probably about 16, 17. So they're almost out mm-hmm. of the house. So you know, she'll have, still have two more kids, but um, it probably won't even be that forty six amount. He might go back and fight it to, you know, make it for a lesser amount, which is which is fair. Which is fair. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I just I'm glad I was never involved in anything like that. That's got to be horrifying. God. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think he fought this particular divorce because his first divorce, he did not have a prenuptial agreement in place. And his first wife walked off with an absolute fortune. And remember, that was kind of at the height of his fame. Yeah. So she yep. walked away with probably like $100 million. $100 million, How long were they married? Uh, they'd been married for a significant amount of time at that point. So Well, in Hollywood, Hat- that's he- two years. No, the guy was over 10 for sure. <laughs> Over oh, 10. Over hey, 10. Go. But it, I'm going to say it was probably more in the 15 to 20 range at that yeah. point. And he has seven kids, by the way. I don't think people God. realize that. Seven he's got kids. three from his second wife. And he's got, I believe, three from his first wife. And then he had a relationship and had a child with her somewhere in between. I'm going to do one North Minneapolis thing to you. So I'm going to ask you a question. But you got to answer it as Kevin Costner, the dad. Okay, you ready? Okay. How many kids do you have? Uh, seven? <laughs> what are you, Catholic? <laughs> you always used to hear that. What are you, Catholic? Is that yeah. it? <laughs> it's true. My mom's from a family of six. There and you. my husband, Bill, Bill, is from a family of seven. So there's... I'm from a family of seven myself. Yep. Nice Catholic boy. All Catholic. Keep having the kids. All right, we will talk to you tomorrow. Wrap up the week. Yeah, it'll be Friday. It'll be good Friday. It'll be good Friday. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Thank you, young lady. See you tomorrow. Talk to you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Kristen Bird Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. That is going to do a hell of a show today. Had great guests on. Show just flew along. It flew by. I'm going to need a few minutes to recover from getting made fun of by Kristen. But other than that, it was (laughs) That's right. She went right after you, man. All right, fellas. We will talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, talk to you then. Thanks. Bye.